I'm with Gary Reynolds, Chief Investment Officer at Courtes, to find out what's been going on in the investment team, in the portfolios, in the UK and around the world. Gary, hi. Yeah. First of all, what's been going on? Tell us about China. Oh, China. China's fascinating. And um, investors that have been looking at the way in which we structure the portfolio would have noticed in the past few years that we've uh, reduced our exposure to China quite significantly. And um, what's been interesting to China as an economy is that it's, it's a communist country that's, that's had an experiment, really, with free market economics. And it's worked. So China have got you know, tens of millions of, of people out of, the, out of the poverty trap. They've grown as an economy. Um, and, and in a way, as this huge number, bearing in mind China's got a population of over one billion, as this huge, huge number of hardworking uh, Chinese people came onto the global market, particularly when um, China were allowed into the World Trade Organization, it had the effect of providing companies around the world with, with low-cost labor, and therefore it reduced prices. So really, from the late 90s through to date, you've had this period of China growing at an extraordinary rate, 9 10 11%. And prices being under pressure, which is why we've had virtually no inflation for, for two decades. When 2015, when Xi Jinping took over as, as, as leader of, of, of China, um, he veered away from traditional free market economics and wanted to apply sort of socialism with Chinese characteristics. And so they've become less free market and and quite restrictive states taking a much closer interest in what people do and so the 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 growth rate they've enjoyed has floundered and the other thing that china has done is use successive amounts of uh, stimulation uh, i.e borrowing to boost the economy so how does that fare for businesses in china are you looking at any business in China? We know you're invested in Lenovo and have been for some time. Yeah. Anything else there? We own Dongwei, which is a chemical company that quoted in, in Hong Kong, but they're the only two holdings. We're very, very selective on China. Sure. And, um, and the reason is that the Chinese have effectively got into massive debt before they've got rich. So their overall debt to GDP is now probably equivalent to what the, the states is as a percentage of, 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 of their income, their GDP. But the the uh, income per head in US is sort of over five times higher than it is in, in China. It's a massive difference. So the average American is significantly better off than the average um, the, the average person in China. And, and yet they've got borrowings roughly equivalent to, to income. So the way to say it is, you know, China has got into debt before it's got rich. And what you're seeing now is the effect of that debt, which has need to a deleveraging, particularly in the property market, is dramatically slowing down China's rate of economic growth. So let's bring it into the Courtes portfolios at present. What's looking good right now in the funds? Closer to home, there's some, there's some really nice things. And what, what's quite fascinating it's not difficult to find good value right now and you can find it in all, all sorts of things infrastructure is is looking good interest rates have pushed down the the um the the, the value of assets on on balance sheets and it's meant that you know you're 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 paying for infrastructure at a discount to what its accounting value is shown as james was talking about uh was it taylor wimpy they, they're, the, they're the house builders, yeah. Slight, slightly different. When I mean infrastructure, just park house builders for a minute and think bridges, schools, hospitals, where the government have sort of paid for, for something to be installed and they're paying an ongoing rent on it. Right. Those, those types. They've got very cheap, so we boosted those a little bit. But then, yeah, James also said that what we found is that UK house builders are remarkably good value which is very interesting. So UK house builders went into the global financial crisis in 2007, 2008 with quite a lot of debt. They got help with interest rates being cut, but 
but subsequently what they've done is almost deleverage payback debt so they can hit difficult periods in the cycle without worrying about big interest rate payments so although it's affected taylor wimpy um uh, barrett's persimmon the the, the 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 big the big uk house builders their balance sheets are in rude health and if the economy starts to get going again and bearing in mind we've got a perennial shortage of housing in the uk they should do very well Tesco's report, James also mentioned, that came back positive. Shares increased there as a result. Cost of living, how does it all look? Interest rates, what, what do you see? What, what do you forecast? Well, I think that the thing with the cost of living increases is that no one's used to it. You know, for me, inflation is a normal thing. So in the 70s, you got used to rapid price rises and you still had the, that effect in the 80s. So what's unusual for somebody of my generation is inflation at nearly zero. What's unusual for youngsters you know, who, who, have, who have just coming into jobs in the last 20 years, they've been used to very, very low interest rates and very, very low levels of inflation. So they're having to adjust to well, crumbs, you know, petrol's going flying up and if I'm doing an extension, I've just found that if I'm buying sand or bricks, they're costing an astronomical amount compared to what they were um, a couple of years back. And, and food prices have been going up. Although, although food prices sort of stabilised and dropped a little recently. So that, that we're probably through now the worst of the inflation. So going back to what's going what's to happen, it probably means that interest rates are going to start to have, have capped and probably should come down. I think certainly in the UK and, and, and Europe, any more hiking would be a big mistake. Thank you, Gary. So thinking ahead and the situation that we're all in, that we're experiencing the rocky year, how do you think this might be influencing broader perception if we look forward to next year's general election? Hmm. Well, general elections always create a lot of un uncertainty um, and everybody because traditionally the Labour Party have been the party of tax and spend and it's seen as not great for business and not great for certainly middle classes, the markets tend to get jittery if it looks like Labour's going to get in. At the moment, however, you have a Conservative Party that's got tax levels at virtually uh, record amounts, big spending plans, notwithstanding that you know, Sunak cancelled, cancelled HS2, but that, that I mean, the, the 20 odd billion that's earmarked for that is going to go somewhere else. So you've got a big spending Tory party, um, which I think doesn't quite know what it is because up, up pops Liz Truss, that Liz Truss at their, their, their convention saying we need to cut public spending and cut taxes and she's getting loads of support despite the chaos that she caused in August 2022. So I think, I think the Tory party has got a, an identity crisis at the moment. They're hoping that the economy will improve um, in time for them to win an election. And what they need to be mindful of is that the economy did extraordinarily well between 1992 and 1997. Uh, Ken Clark was Chancellor during that period, and it was a, a terrific time. Debt to GDP got down to nearly, government debt to GDP down to nearly 40%, and they got blown away at the, at, the, at, the, at the election. Now, I've spoke to a couple of clients recently who were asking me what I thought was the likely outcome with regard the election and what the effect would be on investments. Their view was they are traditional Tory voters and there's no way they're voting Conservative next year. Um, so I think that the Tories are shaping for a, a, a big fall and I suspect it's Starmer's to, to lose. Although as Neil Kinnock found out in 1992 when he should have wiped the floor with the Tories, he blew it at the, at the, at the, the, the final run-in. But for anybody that's watching this and thinking, oh my goodness me, a Labour government's bad for, for the country, that's not necessarily so. 
you know, there's been some very, very good times when asset markets do very well under Labour. And at the moment, you can't get a credit card's worth of difference between the two of them in terms of their policy. So the, U the average UK voter doesn't get choice. Um, so, you know, and, and as I was asked the question, which way am I going to go with it for next year? I suspect the Tories will not get my vote because I'm just kind of sick and tired, like most other people, of the, the problems we've had in, in, in recent years. But um, we'll see. We're, you know, they've, they've got to earn that trust and earn that vote from me and everybody else when the, when the election time comes around. So life will continue around that? Life always continues. Comes the day? Oh, absolutely. What you got, and this, is, this is key. This is key. If you look back at Simon Sharma's history of, of Britain, which is fantastic, read books on the history of the Anglo-Saxons and Roman times here. Politics is a constant nightmare. You know, today we argue in the old days, the Plantagenets were lopping people's heads off, uh, killing bishops in, 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 in cathedrals, doing all sorts of things. And amongst all this, amongst all this, the economy builds and thrives. We move from an agricultural based economy to one of an industrial revolution, um, mechanisation. We take people out of the poverty trap. Things get better. So never look at the politics. Don't look at the politics and think, well, you know, it's, it's all doom and gloom. It always is when you look at politics. Good politicians who are good communicators, and good role models come round. If you're lucky, you, 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 you live under one in a lifetime. But the, the point is, the, the economy is what happens, as someone once said, when people get up and go to work in the morning. And as long as there's new things coming through and we're doing things better and we're improving and we're going towards green energy, AI is going to make things a lot more efficient. We'll be able to do what we do today with less workers in the future. And that means people don't have to work as long or if they do, they'll be better off and everybody benefits so uh, as, as usual so yeah business as usual day at work we wake up it's all blue it's all red if it was all red would that be an exciting year ahead for the investment team you mean if it all went if it, if we if went... labor get in would, yeah I would think... it create an exciting year ahead if if conservatives got in would it be business as usual plod along i don't know what what does it look like well, I, I think, in, I think bus, if it's business as usual and, and the Conservatives get in, it'll be another five years of Tory infighting. You know, this has been the theme for the last 13 years. The Cameron government got, got ousted because of, of, of Brexit. There's, there's variances in, in, in the party. That's, that's quite clear. I'm, I said that in the summer of 2016 when writing on the Brexit vote. That the one thing is that if you don't go into it with a government that's been elected specifically for that, that purpose, it will be political carnage, and it was. So, and, and, and that, that's gone. And I think, personally, I think Tories need to take a, take a spell on the naughty step and rethink their policies and then come back with something that, that is a bit fresher and a bit more meaningful. Um, and then it's up to Labour to see whether they can, they can, they can, they can do something and sort of emulate the achievements of, of new Labour from 97 through to 2010, at least under Blair. I think a simple question really, Gary. Um, does whichever party's in power and their approach influence what businesses you might be looking at and how in terms of sound investments for clients? Not really, because I, I think if you do that, you make a mistake. You, 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 you've got to bet the outcome. So you... If, if there was a specific policy that a government were going to introduce that would benefit a specific sector. So I guess we've had the big changes in the past 30, 40 years with, with um, denationalisation or privatisation. And I think the, the two parties at the moment are so similar in their approach and they're having to... You know, modern social media means messages are out very, very quickly. So the, the whole country knows that the, 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 the water businesses are polluting our rivers. Now, that's not going to change 
whether it's a Conservative government or a Labour government. And those politicians will need to do something about it to secure their, their, the, the, the votes that they need to get in in the first place. So th these parties are a lot closer now. And we've kind of moved away from a hard left, hard right approach. You know, Starmer and Sunak are a lot closer than, say, uh, Johnson and Corbyn ever would be. So they're, they're moving more towards the middle ground. You still notice the, the outliers and the outspoken hard left, hard right. But it's, it's a lot around that middle ground. And in truth, what you do, you, you, you should really try and make your asset decisions by what does the consumer want? What are we going to be building in the future? Which companies do it well and will likely continue to do it well? And which of those are cheap enough to buy and put in the portfolio? And, and I don't think politics makes a, a, a bit of difference in that regard when you, you're doing your job. Thanks, Gary. And I think to close, ahead of this year's client seminars in December, is there anything that you'd like to add now before we approach the seminars? Well, I'm going to cover this issue of, of politics in more detail because we're getting a lot of questions about it. Um, so I think that will be that will be interesting. You know, the, 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 the client seminar before a general election is always quite an interesting time because everybody has, you know, everybody loves politics, takes an interest in it. Um, but we'll also be covering a lot of the stuff where you've got some really good, you've got terrific earnings on lots of these businesses we hold at the moment. And um, it wouldn't take much of a sort of a, a change in market sentiment to just send the share prices up. But even if they don't, I got asked the other day, well, what, what, what if the market doesn't, what if the market in the next 10 years doesn't, take a, a different view on, on the stuff we're holding. Well, because we go for good cash flows and good earnings and good dividends, you're going to make a decent return anyway. So if a lot of these shares, if the market doesn't revalue these stocks that we've got, it almost makes no difference because we can sit on them for 10 years. And that really goes back to the old adage of, of Warren Buffett, which is that the, 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 the best holding period is forever. And that's really what you want to do. If you can sit on a stock for a long time, wait it out, pick your cash flow up, see the balance sheet build, have a, have a, have a payout on dividends, then, then that's good. So we, we'll cover some more of that because you know, there's, 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 some, there's some super stuff out there at the moment. And that's, these are very exciting times. Excellent. Gary, thank you for the insight. Look forward to catching up again next time. Perhaps before the seminars, the way time's flying at the yeah, moment. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Be good. That'd be great. Thank you. To our viewers, if you have any questions, please let us know. We'll get those to the right people. And we'll look forward to catching up again soon. Thank you.